Okay, so today we have a Asus ROG G513 laptop with some nerdy sweat has decided to spit a drink on. Probably Red Bull while they're sitting in the basement. No, I'm just kidding about the nerdy sweat part. But this is a liquid damage laptop. It's been sent in by a viewer. And the viewer has asked me if I can take a look at it. So apparently it's got a few different faults, including the fact that it won't turn on unless it's on mains power. There's an issue with the GPU not being recognized and the USB ports as well. So I think that's all of the issues. There is a note which I'll read, but basically it's been sent in for liquid damage. So we're gonna try and fix it and hopefully get it working again. Then I've got to fix my controller. two controllers. Whoops. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. Whether you're starting a small project to keep yourself busy or you're looking to launch a brand new product into the world, PCBWay have got you covered. Your project can go from idea to reality with services including PCB prototyping, bomb management, mass production and even CNC or 3D printing your final product. PCB production starts from just $5 for 10 one to two layer boards with professional PCB assembly starting at as little as just $30. Check out the link in the video description. Now let's get back to fixing this laptop. Ah, That was my Elite controller. And my Looney Tunes one. <laughs> Poor controllers. Oh well, I'll fix them another time. Well, fixed, fixed. That's the end of the video, bye. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, this has been sent in by a viewer and he's asked me to take a look at it. Uh, that was rather annoying. Uh, I'd literally just moved those out of the way. I need to stop putting them on that shelf. They keep falling down. One of these days they're gonna stop working. But the viewer sent a note in with this and it says liquid spilt on device, uh, sticky residue, cleaned off with IPA. That's not a good idea. It's like getting rid of the evidence after you've just killed someone. Um, device only powers on when plugged in. Uh, device does not recognize a graphics card, potentially getting no power. USB ports on side not functioning either. So a few different issues here. I can't turn the page over because there's contact info on the other side. Uh, it says the power supply is in the right hand side of the box, but I've got that plugged in. So I have already tried this. I went to do a video on this earlier on and I didn't have the passcode, so I know it turns on. I went to start a video and then I went to log into it with the mains power connected and there was no passcode to the laptop. So I had to get in touch with the owner and get the passcode because I need to obviously log into it and see what's going on. So. Yeah, let's just turn it on with all of its uh, ooh, flashy lighted glory. Damn it, that, oh, that scared me earlier as well. Oh, that noise. It's creepy, man. Jesus. <laughs> man, that's slow. A computer's meant to be this slow because mine's way quicker than this. Um, I know it does boot up because, like I said, I did try and boot it up earlier. But... Yeah, never mind. Oh, too many too many things going wrong in one video. First two controllers fall over. Then I get crapped up by the noise that the laptop makes when you start it up. What else is next? Come on, load! Nah, it was worth a try. No, this is going to take forever. Uh, this could be something to do with the liquid damage, honestly. It shouldn't be taking this long. It's a pretty high-spec laptop. Uh, Ryzen 5 5000 series um, RTX graphics card. It really shouldn't take this long. I'm assuming 16 gig RAM or 32 gig RAM minimum. Uh, well, 16 minimum, probably 32 for a laptop of this spec. But, yeah. What we should really be doing is taking it apart while we're waiting. And it blue screened. Well, <laughs> there's problem number three then, I guess. Hmm, driver power state failure. That's probably a graphics card driver. 
Hmm. Stop it! Man, that sends a shivers down me. Jesus. Don't like that sound at all. I'm glad my PC doesn't make that sound. There we go. One issue that this has got, it's running in Windows 11. And Windows 11 sucks. There we go. Right. Ah, yeah, I told you he was a sweat look. He plays World of Warcraft. God damn it. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. I like to poke fun out of my uh, my viewers. It's funny. Right, let's, let's go to Device Manager, first of all. And, okay, 3050 Ti. It has reported problems, code 43. Uh, that could be a graphics driver issue. Uh, not seeing any battery icon. Interesting. Right, let me just connect to Wi-Fi. Yeah, it's not picking up a battery at all. The graphics card's not showing up. G513 drivers. Why are you not connecting to the internet? Uh, the network security key is correct. All right. Let me just connect this up to HDMI. Uh, maybe not, because it's not actually picking up HDMI. Right, well, definitely an issue with GPU then. So, yeah, I'm going to download the uh, graphics driver. Uh, let's, dr let's download the... Uh, AMD chipset. So we've got the chipset there. There's the graphics driver. Uh, I'm going to install the chipset. See if that fixes any issues. I'm still going to have to take this apart. No, we'll choose to restart later. Uh, NVIDIA virtual audio device. Hmm. So it's got driver issues for sure. Disable the driver. Uh, uninstall. And remove the driver. Something keeps popping up. I'm not sure what that is. Scan for hardware. Update driver. Search for drivers on Windows Update. What's the status of that download? Still taking a while. Let's switch to Ethernet. Uh, let's unplug that HDMI cable. Uh, good news is the battery is now working. It's now detecting a battery. Uh, so you're not going to see that very well, but there you go. It's now detecting a battery. So if I go back to the device manager, uh, that's actually not showing anything up. Uh, actually, it is showing a battery, sorry. I know this is a bit blurred. The HDMI, um, HDMI output's not working. There's really not a lot I can do about that. We've got 25 seconds left on this download. So as soon as I switch to Ethernet, it started picking up speed. So I'm just downloading the graphics driver. Or rather, I'm just going to install the graphics driver, should I say. Well, I've started launching that, so I can get rid of that. And let's run through this setup. Install. So I'm not going to test the battery yet, because that's not really my primary concern. The main concern is to get things like USB working and things like that. Uh, I will test a USB. So I've got a USB tester here by CMI Zapper. Uh, it's a chipmunk USB tester, so I can use that to see if we're getting power and data. We are. So USBs apparently working. It says not recognised, but that's probably normal. It's communicating with the CPU on that one. Uh, it was flashing green for a second. And I'm sure you can hear the Windows notification sound. And that's communicating as well. Also, I should probably show you that actually communicating with the CPU. So flash is green when it's communicating. 
and that is indeed working. Uh, so that's installed the graphics driver now. So let's restart it. And I'll let that restart and then uh, pick up the video once it's actually back in Windows. Uh, nope, not going to run through that setup. So I'll get rid of that. Let's run device manager again. And we still have a warning. So we've got code 43 on that. So I think that's going to be hardware level error. Uh, which means this is going to have to be taken apart, I guess, to try and figure that out. So let's just check this. Okay, it's working on battery. Let's just plug in a USB and we'll see if we're actually getting USB data across. So for USB-C, probably the best thing I can find, or rather the best thing I've got immediately to hand is gonna be this thermal camera. So we've got an infrared thermal camera and if I just go to the camera app, Uh, nope, don't access that. And yeah, that is picking up a USB camera. That's picking up a USB camera. So that that's actually the thermal camera, but without the uh, colours, you know, without the um, thermal colours because I haven't got any software to run it. Um, to run that, I'd need a program called TC View. But that is actually picking up. So if I unplug that from here now, you see that? So the USB is working, or at least type C is working there. Uh, my kitty's just decided she wants something. All right, she just wanted to go outside for a poop. Well, never mind. So that's working absolutely fine in terms of USB type C. I've got a USB type A to USB type C here, which I can use for testing the type A ports. That's an external SSD. So if I just go to local disk D, yep, there you go. So that's picking up my external drive in that port. Picking up the drive in that port. And yeah, it's picking up the drive in that port as well. So all three ports are working. So I'm assuming that there was nothing wrong with those. Um, and the chipset could have sorted that. You know, the chipset driver would have sorted the USB ports out, but yeah, I'm really not sure on those, but there is definitely a code 43 error on the graphics card. So, or rather the external graphics card. So the internal GPU, but the external GPU we've got code 43. So we're going to have to take it apart to sort that out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to shut this down. There we go. So that's shutting down. Let's unplug my Ethernet cable. And I'm going to take this apart and I'll see what's going on with it. So I can see something here uh, straight away. So one thing I always like to say is never just blindly take it apart, always look, right? Because I can see something on the heatsink which is gonna give me some sort of visual clue as to what might be going on. So if we look, we've got a black spot just here on the heatsink. So you see that on my fingers? My hands was clean. Uh, <laughs> But we've got a black spot here, and that looks like charring to me. So something like a uh, burnt component or something like that. But it's not just the fact of what's on the heatsink, it's where it is. This here is the CPU. I know that because that's got liquid metal on it, and it says right there, CPU. That's the GPU. And that corresponds to this black spot. So we're going to be looking around there, I think, first of all, for any kind of damage. 
always look while you're taking it apart. Never just blindly take them apart. So we don't need any of this right now. All we need is this board. So everything else can go to one side. Let's look under the microscope. So we've got something directly on the GPU here. I don't know if that's liquid or what, but I don't think that's meant to be there, to be honest. But anyway, we're gonna be looking around this area. So let's go straight to roughly where that was. And it's right there. So we've definitely got some soot and what appears to be a couple of damaged components and also a liquid damaged MOSFET on one of the GPU, uh, GPU core faces. So I don't think I really need Sherlock to work this out. There's definitely liquid damage around here. Uh, so we've got some liquid damage here on these. I think these are probably filters or well, they're marked with a D, so maybe diodes. Uh, we've got something here on this capacitor um, we've also got some damage around here. So I think the first thing to do is probably clean this up. Uh, this is going to be a big resistor, probably a current sense resistor or something, I don't know. Could be a fuse. Uh, I may have to get a schematic. Yeah, that's took a hit pretty badly. So, I don't know what this is meant to be, but this is going to be our issue right here. It does look like we have some damaged pads. So, this is going to have to come off, this component is, same as that MOSFET that's next to it. Uh, look at that, that's just absolutely disgusting. We've got some pads here as well. So, these are all going to be test points here. I'm going to have to resolder these, so I'll have to re -tin them. Uh, just to prevent any further damage down the line. Uh, they're fine for now, but, you know, I don't want to leave that stuff there. We've got some stuff around here as well. Looks like a... This is a on-semiconductor power management IC, so... Yeah, that could be something to do with uh, GPU power as well. Uh, this one... There's a little bit here as well, so we might have to end up reflowing that chip as well. That's another on-semiconductor chip again presumably for power management so quite a bit going on here really so i want to neutralize this liquid damage first so i'm using isopropyl alcohol with a cotton swab just to try and get rid of the residue that's been left on the board all right so that's enough cleaning for now let's just have a look at this with the multimeter let's see what it's reading so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop my multimeter into resistance mode and just check end to end. See if we've got any reading on the actual component itself. It says overload as in open line. 23 million ohms, that's blown. That is blown. 25 million ohms, 30. Yeah, it's rising. Yeah, I think... I think that's meant to be a zero ohm resistor to be honest. Yeah, that's definitely zero zero five. So that's a zero ohm resistor and that's definitely blown. So that's, that's gonna be the main cause of this issue. And this is why you shouldn't clean anything up. In fact, I'm not even getting a reading off the pads now. So, ah, I was getting a reading off my fingers. Apparently there's 20, 25 million ohms of resistance through my hands. Yeah, that's completely blown. It's it's wide open, as in you know, there's nothing there basically. It's open circuit. So I think that's probably acting as some sort of a fuse, and that's blown, and that's what's caused this issue. I'm gonna have a quick look on. I don't have one of these exact donor boards, but I might have a similar resistor on another donor board, maybe. I'll tell you what. Let's do some clean up first. I. I'll probably end up having to order one, if I'm being honest. I can't find a board code on this. Ah, oh, there it is. So, I'm going to look for a schematic, because I'm probably going to end up having to order a resistor. But I will look on some donor boards before I do that. Okay, so, 
I can't find a schematic for this. Uh, it looks like it's unavailable. That kind of sucks. I can't even find them on the paid forums and things like that. Realistically, I should be able to find one on the donor board, even if it's not exactly the same footprint. Uh, so I'll worry about that in a minute. I'm going to take it off because it's very clearly bad. It's completely open circuit, so that's going to have to come off. You can actually see stuff fizzing just here, look. So yeah, that's got to come off. And I've taken that off purely because it looks liquid damaged. And it's going to be the same case with this IC and this IC. You can see the corrosion around the top. So I'm going to start cleaning these up one by one and then putting them back on. I'll worry about the resistor later on. I mean, if it's zero ohm, technically I could... I don't really want to, but technically if I can't find one, I could bridge it, you know, just temporarily, just to see if it works, but... Mm, I don't really want to do that. So I need to find a donor board with one of those components on now, which might take me a while. But the good thing is, with the power of editing, you get to see it immediately. Uh, I've got a Nintendo Switch OLED board here. I've just been hunting around and then I realised, you know what? The OLED boards have got one of these resistors on. Um, I'm going to try this. <clears throat> I don't have any more boards to hand. So I'm going to try this and if it works, I'll order the correct one. Well, I mean, I'll probably stress test it, actually. And if it passes a stress test, you know, an extended stress test, then there shouldn't be any issues. So, I just need to make sure I've got this wire in place. I'm going to add one to the other side anyway, just because... Damn it, my wire came off. So 
So I'm just basically just going to recreate this pad here. I know it doesn't look perfect, but you know what? As long as it's got enough current carrying capacity, I don't care. Well, I do care a little bit, but not enough to the point where I'm going to sit here for hours trying to get it to look perfect. I could use a little bit of solder wick, but I think that's a little bit overkill. So I'll do it like this. Damn it, I really just can't get a contact on that at all. There we go. Right, a nice blob of solder. That'll do the job. Nicely. So I'll just warm all this flux up. I'm going to clean that up with IPA. I use a toothbrush this time just to get inside all the little nooks and crannies. So yes, I know this pad doesn't look great. I absolutely do, 100% know. But it should be sufficient. And its functionality overlooks any day. So I'm just giving this a really good scrub using IPA. So you can see here that we've pretty much got the same resistor code, it's just a little bit smaller. It's still a 005 resistor. And if I go into continuity mode, zero ohms, which is what it should read. Let's just have a look at these what I believe to be filters. I think they're going to have to come off and retinned as well because, well, they don't look great, do they? So I'm going to take those off, retin those, resolder them on. There we go. I'll just clean this up. Yeah, it's dead for their filters because we've got ground pads, uh, sorry, we've got middle pads as well. Um, I think they're probably ground pads, maybe. Um, so I don't think they're going to be filters. I'm not sure. Doesn't really matter to me as long as I haven't got to replace them, what they are. Actually, no, the diode, didn't they? Yeah, oh, I've already mentioned that once. I'm not really concentrating on what they are. <laughs> Never mind. Right, let's just get rid of a couple of those little black spots. So I'm going to read in this. And those pads are coming back nice and shiny. It's in the rest of the area, we may as well. There we go. And then Pin number one is top left. So I'm just going to clean up the components themselves as well. Just because we've got some gunk on them. And same with that one. So I kept, in, kept them in the correct orientation on the desk while I cleaned up the pads. So, that's absolutely fine. I know which way they'll go. I have knocked a resistor there. go and there we go good stuff that is looking good so all that's left to do I think is to clean off this thermal paste put some fresh on and sort out the liquid metal on the CPU Oh, 
Okie doke. Let's just sort out this liquid metal. Yeah, we've got liquid metal seepage all over there. Damn. When it hasn't hit the CPU caps. Well, it kind of has. Yeah, that's going to have to come off. Well, never mind. So I'm going to have to take all of this off and I'm going to have to conform or coat it, I think, to protect it. By the way, I did just check under this while I was looking and that wasn't there. That cap there. Oh, look at that. Wow. Oh, I guess, um, yeah. That's rough. That is rough as... Oh, wow. Oh, man. That really wasn't protected, was it? Good Lord. Damn, that's a lot of liquid metal that got in that corner. I'm surprised that that didn't kill this CPU. That could have happened in transport or something and, you know, it's just seeped under there but not quite to the point where it was hitting any of the caps. Because obviously liquid metal is conductive, it's metal. And it's made with gallium or something. I think it's gallium. I know I've got contaminants in that, I'll sort it in a minute. Right, that's good enough, I think. So, I'm going to need to protect this now. That was a lot of liquid metal that was underneath that uh, adhesive or whatever the hell you want to call it. So that's not good because liquid metal is conductive and obviously if that hits the CPU caps, it's going to conduct and short out the CPU. So yeah, really not good, Azus. Really not good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some conformal coating and I'm going to protect the entire area. So this is basically, well, it's solder mask. Um, so it's meant for protecting things like trace wire and things like that. But we also use it for protecting CPUs and GPUs when, we, when we're doing like liquid metal mods and stuff. Obviously it also comes in handy for when we're trying to sort out liquid metal issues. So we just want to put a layer around the edge. Make sure that nothing's going to short out once we cure it. So the UV light's going to cure it. So I'm going to leave that there for around about five minutes or so, just sitting on top of the CPU. So there's the CPU, and it's going to sit right there on top of it. About five minutes, that should cure it. It should be good to go. Boom. There we go. So we built ourselves a little bit of a bridge sort of thing around there and uh, basically now if any liquid metal does spit out it's not going to cause any issues so that's ultimately what I wanted to do so let's just prep this using an alcohol pad not that this is really necessary but you know it'll make 100% sure that it's all good could just use normal isopropyl but oh well there we go beautiful we don't need to worry that there's a little bit of conformal coating around the edge of the dye. The liquid metal will still do its job absolutely fine. And that is way too much. I hate it when that happens. It's still too much, to be honest. There we go. All right, so let's just spread this. Yep, that's got it. Right, hopefully... That's going to sort the issues. I do have some liquid metal on the desk. I'm going to need to sort that out because otherwise it's going to go all over, all over the laptop. I don't want that to happen. So let me just tidy my desk up. There we go. A uh, little bit of thermal paste for the GPU. That's what it had on it before.
and we're done. That was a bit of a, a pain in the backside because I couldn't figure out where the last screw went. Um, managed to figure that out and then I uh, forgot to plug the ribbons in for the bottom LEDs. So I had to take the base back off again. So that was really annoying, but never mind. Right, well, it turns on. Does it display? That's the question. I mean, realistically, it shouldn't be any worse off than it was. All I've done is replaced some um, solder and cleaned up some pads. So, theoretically, it should be working. It's working on battery, or at least it's pairing on. I will get a microfiber cloth for this. Oh, you, you stupid freaking sound. Oh, wow, that's so much quicker. Holy hell, that's so much quicker. Oh, no, I don't mind being scared. I'm such a pussy. <laughs> oh dear. What is the deal now? It's a lot quicker than it was. Device manager. Okay. Code 43. Still, really? It is a lot quicker. Let's update the driver. Uh, search on Windows Update, NVIDIA Display Driver, yeah, okay, let's run all of these updates. I'm going to connect up to Ethernet so it downloads quicker. Damn, it's 4.39am. I think I might just leave this running, to be honest. Uh, this is going to take quite some time to do. I'll tell you what, let's just see if we get a display on HDMI, shall we? So I'm using the HDMI cable from my microscope so I know it works but let's just see if we get a display from HDMI now yep there we go yes boom there we go we are now getting a display on HDMI so you can see here now that we get code 43 so I'm going to uninstall the driver and remove and then if I scan for hardware changes, uh, no, it's not picking up, damn it. So let's run the installation for the graphics again, and let's let that run. Uh, Wi-Fi is picking up, um, battery recognising as well. Uh, yeah, let's restart. Right, okay, well... I'm going to have to pause it till tomorrow then because this is going to take forever to do now just because it's running up updates. So I'll pause, I'll say tomorrow, about four hours, but yeah, never mind. I'm going to get some sleep. Right, okay, so it's the next morning and the laptop's just asked me to do a BIOS update. So that's just running now. Uh, it shouldn't take long, but then hopefully that's going to detect that graphics card. I think the liquid damage probably threw it off a little bit, maybe knocked a couple of sensors out or something like that. But, yeah, it seems to be working fine now. I'm hoping that the graphics card's going to work. Right, so that's just rebooting now. Uh, I had to pause it because my partner came downstairs and she was playing um, a soap in the background. She was catching up on her soaps. Uh, TV soaps. They're annoying. But, yeah, if you hear anything in the background, it's I don't normally record in the day for that reason. But, never mind. There you go. Nope, didn't crap me up that time. Didn't scare me. I was waiting for it. The problem is the delay between when you start it up. Uh, it's trying. No, you're not going to scare me. The problem is the delay when you start from when you start it up to when it actually makes that noise. It's really annoying. Okay, there we go. Um, there's all of the drivers updated, or it should be. Let's have a look what's left on Windows Update. Uh, download error for the display driver. Let's try that again, shall we? Uh, oh, maybe not. Device working perfectly. Or properly, should I say. Still got the HDMI, let me show you that. There you go. RTX 3050 working properly. So, we need to put this under a stress test now. Let's go high settings. Uh, full screen, resolution, system, run, uh, 130 FPS, 140 FPS. So I think what I need to do is I need to 
run this for quite some time. Uh, let's benchmark it. Why not? Fans are ramping up. Uh, yeah, let's run it through this. Let's put it through its paces. And there we go. So it's run through that without any blue screens. And everything seems okay. So that was on 1920 by 1080 in full screen. Screen? Hmm. Full screen. <laughs> And, yeah, that appears to be perfectly fine. It doesn't appear to be, uh, you know, glitching out or anything like that. No artefacting. It's running fairly decently, to be honest. Um, overall, I'm happy with that. Yeah, absolutely no problems. Uh, let's go Ultra. Actually, let's quit that. Uh, let's start it at Ultra, just to make sure it's actually running Ultra. Run. There you go. 120 FPS on Ultra. Pretty much locked by the look of that. That seems perfectly fine to me. Let's try this uh, 2560 by 1440p. So 1440p Ultra settings. I don't think this is a 4K screen. So I don't think it'll do 4K. But uh, yeah, 1440p uh, uh, Ultra high settings. And it looks like we're locked at around about 90 FPS, which is absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, that seems perfectly fine to me. I can't see any issues with, with this system now. Uh, 70 FPS, uh, a little bit of drop down to like 20 something as it's switching scenes, but you know, that's perfectly normal, I think. Um, yeah, pretty much locked at between 60 to 90 FPS on ultra settings, so you know, temperatures holding. It's not overheating. You know, the fans are ramping up, but that's perfectly normal for a benchmark and stress test. So I will take that all day long. So yeah, there you go. As you can see, this seems to be running absolutely fine. There's no glitching or anything like that. And I think we've solved the issues. The USB issue seemed to be down to the chipset driver as well as the battery issue. It wasn't showing the battery to start with. Um, I didn't actually see the USB issue, but I'm going to pretend I fixed it with the chipset driver. So, yeah, a little bit of liquid damage. Uh, used the Nintendo Switch board to fix it by replacing that resistor. Cleaned up liquid damage. Uh, fresh liquid metal, fresh thermal paste. It's running at a, a well, reasonable temperature, 80-something degrees Celsius on ultra settings. I'm happy. This job is done. So this can go back to the customer, and hopefully the sweat won't spill any more liquid on his laptop. So that's going to be for now. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. I'll always do my best to answer. If you do want to organise a repair, check out the video description. You can get in touch and send over a device for repair. If you do want to support me, there's also some support links in the video description as well. As always, don't forget to subscribe. Turn on the bell notifications if you haven't done so already. It really does massively, massively help me out. So with that being said, that's going to be it for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, see you later. Bye for now.